In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Shone full-size fountain pen with Monarch nib. I'll go over the specs, I'll do a writing sample, and I'll tell you what I like and don't like about this pen coming up. Blake here with Blake's Broadcast. On this channel, I review fountain pens, paper, and ink, and as always, I put links in the show notes in the description below. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps out my channel. All right, let's get on with the review. So this is the Shone Design Engineered Plastics Full-Sized Fountain Pen. And this one I have here is in Ultim Plastic, and it has the Shone In-House Monarch Titanium Nib. Now, Shone Design is an American brand that I've been aware of for some time. I've never purchased any of their pens, but when I saw that they were making their own nib in-house, I became very, very interested, and this pen was very nicely loaned to me by a friend, and it's a really cool pen. It's very special, I think, to be making a nib in-house in the United States. I can't think of another brand that's doing that. If you guys know of one, let me know. Shown Design in the past, I think, is most known for pocket pens, and this one they call a full-size pen because it can fit a Schmidt K5 converter, as we see kind of here through this translucent Ultum body. Now, the material Ultum is an engineered plastic, as the name engineered plastic full-size fountain pen would suggest. Not the sexiest fountain pen name, but uh, it is what it is. It's sort of a amber, yellowy, translucent plastic, and this is supposed to be a extremely durable plastic. It is a plastic that is very strong, difficult to damage. It's something that's used in industrial and medical applications. It's a material I've never experienced before, uh, so I'm excited to see it. It's neat to see it in a pen. I always like when there's something new happening material-wise and in this case nib-wise, so that's like a double whammy for me. I, I'm very excited about this pen. Now, let's walk through the pen. So again, we have that Ultim plastic body, and this is what's called their straight wall version of the full-size pen. There's one that uh, tapers towards the points, and it has slightly pointy finials, whereas this is completely flat, and it's just a straight cylinder. I think this, I don't know, to me looks neater. It looks more industrial, which is sort of in line with the Ultum material. It has a very cool presence to it. It's unlike any other fountain pen that I've had before. Now, it's a threaded cap, and because it is a straight cylinder, there is no posting here, so you will not be able to post it. There's also no clip, so there's, you know, if you put this pen or the cap on the desk, it will roll, but because it is a very durable material, I don't think you'll have too much issue if at least the cap falls off. The nib, I would, you really don't want to drop any fountain pen off of a desk, uh, so I would just be very, very careful about that. Now, looking closer at the section here, we can see there's a step down to the threading, and the reasoning for that is so that you can get this straight cylinder, so it makes sense that you have to have a step down to that threading. And you'll notice that there are these like little red or orange circles. These are gaskets, and there's one on the cap here. So this pen seals really, really nicely. And if I unscrew the body here, again, you will see another gasket here. This would be a good candidate to convert to an eyedropper. I have not done that. Again, this isn't my pen. I'm not going to fill it with ink but uh, this would be a, a good candidate for an eyedropper conversion just because it has these gaskets. Now again, also Schmidt uh, K5 converter, as we said, so standard international cartridge and converter system here. The grip section has a sort of very flat part in the middle with a subtle taper towards each end. Pretty nice, it's pretty comfortable. It's not the widest grip section, but it works pretty well. And this isn't a heavy pen, so I've found it to be very comfortable. Now we get to the, what I would say is the real star of the show here. This is the Shone Monarch nib. Now this is a titanium nib, 
And if we look at the feed, you'll see it's kind of translucent. Now that it has ink in it, it looks a little bit darker, but this is also made of Ultim, that Ultim plastic material that the body is made out of. Very cool to have that here. You can get an option for a regular black plastic one, but if you got the Ultim pen, you might as well go for the Ultim feed. Now you'll notice the nib wraps completely around. On the bottom, we have a star shape here. And then on the top, it just says shown. And there's no breather hole. It's just a slit. And then you can see a point. And the point kind of tilts upwards, which I think reminds me of a Schaefer. I think that nib looks the closest to like the Schaefer Legacy that I reviewed. I'll put a link to that up in the corner so you guys can see that review. Another American made pen. Now, if you notice the tip, you can see that. It's interesting. The top, the shape of it is a little bit flat up here. And I've noticed that this nib actually writes smoother upside down than it does right side up, which I think is the very first for me. So that's kind of unusual. The nib is made of titanium. Now, the finish is purple. This is like a very purple nib with like a hint of blue. And when I look at Shown Design's website, I don't see an option for a purple nib. So I think this is the polished blue rainbow finish, but I'm not 100% sure about that. If you guys know of a different finish that they offered in the past, this might be just a different finish. Let me know what you guys think in the comments low. Now there's no getting around the fact that this is a very expensive pen. Now most of it, except for the converter I think, is made in the USA. So that is very special for a modern fountain pen. The Ultim full-sized pen with the straight walls and a standard number six nib is $250. And then the Monarch nib with this, with the polished blue rainbow finish is $440. So $440 for a titanium nib, that is an absolute ton of money. So if you buy them separately, $690 for the total package. Now I do believe there is a 12% discount if you buy this pen with the Monarch nib. So that would bring it down to $607. That is a lot of money for this pen. And even though I think this pen looks really, really cool, it's hard to say that this looks like a $600 pen. It just it really doesn't. It doesn't necessarily have a premium feel to it either. It doesn't feel cheap, but I mean, this is a plastic pen and there's really no finishing on here apart from the nib. You know, there's not a lot of obvious handiwork that goes into this pen. So that $600 price point, it's a lot, but I do like that you're supporting a company that's making fountain pen nibs in America. So that is, to me, very compelling. Now let's do the size and weight. We're looking at about 128 millimeters long and uncapped, looking at 122. Now let's do the weight, 17.14 grams, and then capped, 20.7 grams. So it's a, quite a lightweight pen. I think this is like a very nice everyday carry kind of pen. It's not luxurious, but it is, I think, very well made and something that would be very durable for everyday use. Now in terms of some comparisons, we'll compare it to some other fountain pens here. This is a Pilot Metropolitan here, and you can see it's a little bit longer than it, but it's wider than the Metropolitan. And you know, again, this is a flat top pen, so flat top pens tend to be shorter. And then we have a Schaefer Legacy here. You can see it's longer than that. And then we have a Twisby VAC 700 here, which is quite a bit bigger. Now, one interesting thing to look at is the nib design here. Now, if we look at these, their side profile, we can see that the nibs kind of point upwards, which I think is, is interesting. Now, one problem I sometimes have with the Schaefer is that the feed or like the section, I'll bottom it out on the paper, depending on the angle I'm holding it. With the shown design, I have not had that problem at all, but just kind of an interesting similarity to American-made fountain pens here. Both have these sort of upward pointing 
nibs. So for the writing sample, I'm going to be using a Papermind Mitsubishi Bank Paper Notebook. This notebook is really excellent for fountain pens and for Blake's broadcast viewers and subscribers. You can get 10% off with code BB10 at checkout. So this is the shown design Monarch nib F and this is their full size Full size old Tem fountain pen. And this is Urban Violet Fancy. Okay. Oops. We'll try some fast writing here. Okay. So, nope performance issues. This nib is an excellent performer. Now, I'm not going to try to flex it because it's not my pen, but it is pretty much a, a, a nail. Um, just there really isn't too much springiness to it that I can feel when I'm writing with it. It's not the smoothest nib. I wouldn't say that it feels like an unpleasant scratchiness, but there is for sure feedback there. Now, interestingly, when you turn the nib over for reverse writing, it's way smoother. So it can do reverse writing, and you know, you'll notice that it's not getting quite as much ink, but this is one of the first nibs where the underside, I think, is actually smoother than the regular <laughs> normal point side. So that's very interesting. It's a good writing pen. Not, again, like I said, not the smoothest, but performance-wise, I have no complaints. It writes well. So what are my pros and cons for the Shone Design full-size pen with Monarch nib? Well, I really like that this nib is made in-house in the United States of America. I don't think there are any other pens, that I'm aware of at least, that are making nibs in the USA. If I'm wrong about that, please, please let me know because I'd be very interested in reviewing their pens. Whole pen, except for I guess probably the converter, is made in the USA. That's really, really nice, and I think that's special today, 2024, where there, most of the American fountain pen manufacturing has been left to just turning the pen, making the body, and buying a nib from someone else. So I think that's really, really special. It's something that Shown Design should be, you know, commended for because they're bringing full-on American fountain pen manufacturing back. So very, very cool. The design of this pen, I really like. It doesn't look like any other pen. The Ultim material has a very kind of industrial look to it. And the nib also has a unique look. It's wraparound titanium with this sort of purpley, uh, iridescent finish to it. It looks very modern. It's very, very cool looking. I like the red or orange uh, rubber gaskets. It just has a very, very neat look. Performance has been very nice on this pen. Uh, no issues with skipping or hard starting. Those seals seal up the pen quite nicely. This would be a good candidate for an eyedropper conversion. The other cool thing is that Shown Design sells a different grip section that you can buy separately that will fit in this pen and that can fit Bach number eight size nibs. So you can put some really big nibs on this pen. Really, really like that. Now in terms of cons, the biggest con for me is the price. Very, very expensive, a bit over $600 if you buy it in combination or $690 if you buy them separately. That is a lot of money for a pen that, you know, doesn't necessarily look premium. If you didn't know what you were looking at, you would probably think this is, you know, a $50, $100 pen somewhere in that that range, not $600. So it doesn't have a premium appearance. It also doesn't post, which 
you know, some people don't care about, but that's always nice. And when you don't have a clip or any kind of roll stopper, this is a pen that will roll on a desk. So that I would say is a downside. Going back to the pros though, comfortable size, very comfortable grip section. Now back to cons, not the smoothest writing nib. The writing experience doesn't have that special of a feel to it. It's definitely feedbacky without being scratchy and unpleasant, but it's not a wow. And for $440, I mean, you can have like an 18 karat gold Aurora italic nib, which is a very special, very luxurious nib. Or you could buy probably for $690, you can have a 146 with again, an 18 karat gold nib that's also in-house. That's just a bit softer, a bit more special feeling than this. Looks wise, this looks special, this looks unique, but performance wise, boy, $440, it's a pretty hard pill to swallow, I think. Uh, and that's really the biggest downside of this pen. But that's pretty much it. Do you guys have this pen? Do you like this pen? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you wanna see more fountain pen paper and ink videos, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much and until next time.